humble to brag about himself. And you know what kickstarted his career in sports years back was him being a finalist on the TV show Gladiators. He has been involved in so many different areas of the sport and at top level. We're talking Olympic athletes, we're talking Manchester City, we're talking Premiership football, we're talking, what more did I have to mention? The list goes on and on and on and on. And he is taking care of his athletes the way he is caring, the humble, caring family man that he is. And you know, they even take him with them on holidays. We are going to listen to this man tell about what he has done in this field. So please welcome Neil Parsley. to a stage, people should be shouting too. <laughs> Super. Um, well, this is, this is really cool to be here, guys. So, I have got a massive passion for sport. Sport has been my life. Um, I live, eat and breathe sport. So, the, the talk today is a little bit different as far as, as much as I love sport, there's, there's a few key messages that I really want to give you to help you understand how to grow um, to grow your customer customer base and hopefully help help your partners to understand it as well. Because I think there's a couple of fundamental things that if you get right, that you, you can you know I've seen I've seen what can happen. I've seen some like my sisters absolutely flying, and you know see it's get, getting it right is important. So that's why it's a very different talk for me today. Usually I'm telling people how to get fitter, faster, stronger. Um, so it's very different. So bear with me. Right, let's go. What have we got? Sorry. Okay, so marginal gains. Now, I'm going to take you through what marginal gains means. Um, so, I think understanding the concept, where it's come from, is really important. And then you'll see later on in the later on in the presentation, it'll start to come together. So, bear with me. All right. So, so Chris Hoy, I was lucky enough to to stand in a gym and watch him train for probably about four or five years. Um, unbelievable guy, absolute perfectionist, very funny as well, very dry. Um, so yes, that's why that's why he's on, on my first slide, because he's, 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 he's the epitome of someone who, who used the marginal gain concept. So, there's two pioneers, Sir Clive Woodward, I'm a rugby guy, my, my, my sport is rugby. Um, so when he, when he won the, the Rugby World Cup, 2003. It was it was him who who came up with the, the sort of real different way of thinking. We, we've we've only ever won it once, and it's you know down down to him. If you if you read his book and listen to the guy, very very clever. Not actually coaching on the pitch, but just setting the system up. And and this this idea of marginal gains was a real big part of it. And then Dave Brailsford. So I I, I indirectly work for Dave. So I work for the English Institute of Sport. Dave, British Cycling, British Taekwondo, all these different sports, they use the English Institute of Sport for the support staff, so the strength and conditioning coaches, the nutritionists. So we would actually facilitate all, all, all the support to his, to his riders. So that's why sort of uh, English Institute of Sport was my boss, but I was working for him indirectly. Um, and he's a, he's a fantastic guy, always had time for everyone, but very, very clever. And when I was with him at British Cycling, what he's gone on to with the, if anyone loves cycling, what, he, what he's done since then, again, is just the, the mark of the man. And they've, you know, they're, they're both, both fantastic guys. So that's where, that's where marginal gains has come, has come from. So Sir Clive thought of it this way, do 100, 100 things 1% better. That was, that was his, his way of thinking, and that's what he, he spoke to the players about, rather than, rather than saying, because if you say to an athlete, I'm gonna get you 100% better, you sort of, you probably lose them. 
But if you say, I'm gonna do, want, try and get 100, 100 things, 1% 1 better, then there's a little bit of a buy-in. It's a different, different way of speaking to an athlete because athletes know, that's why I think you've gotta be careful. We're gonna talk about this later on, speaking to people in sport and athletes. You've gotta be careful. 1%, 0.1%, 0.5% means everything in sport. So if you start saying, this is gonna make you 20% fitter or 20% stronger, you'll lose a lot of athletes and, and people who work in sports. So that's just sort of number one. Just be careful with percentages because if you're in, a, if you're in elite sport, 0 0.01 means a lot. So if you start throwing 10% 10, 10 and 20, that, that, that can lose people. And then, so Dave, he, he was thinking the other way around. He was looking for these 1%. So yeah, that a that little bit different way of thinking, but both of them just looking for, for these, these gains. They're looking to improve their athletes so collectively they win more. So I thought it's always good to try and have a funny. So I don't know if you can have a little look. I, I like this one. So this is, this is what <clears throat> you'd sit down, you'd have the rider is in the middle, and then you'd look at all the things. As a, as a cycling coach, Dave Brailsford, he'd look at all the things, but I really love this. I did a little Google search, as you do. So reduce beer belly, remove the spoke reflectors, wearing a more elaborate looking helmet. I, I thought this was really funny, so sorry, I just had to put it in. So <laughs> these are not the Marzal games we're gonna speak about today, but they just, it, this one especially, reduce beer belly just made me laugh. Okay, so. <coughs> So my work in life, pretty much, this, this sort of sums up what I, what, I, what, what I was. So the athletes in the middle, and then this is very much, anyone, anyone who's in medicine, this is very much a multidisciplinary approach. I, didn't, I just thought that was a, a sport thing, and then I started to realize actually there's a, there's a lot of other industries that use this approach. But the multidisciplinary approach means all these people around the outside, to help this person in the middle. In, in medicine, it's the, the patient. Yeah, in sports, it's the athlete. So the athlete's in the middle, so we, we would sit down and there'd probably be about 20, 20 to 25 people when I was working British cycling and, the, and all we're doing is talking about one rider and we're trying to, and, and Dave Brails, Brailsford would chair the meeting and he'd want to know which areas you can help make this rider 1% better. So by the end of the meeting with 20 different people, you'd have a list of maybe 60, 70 things. And these are, that, that's, why he, that's why he was so good. He delved into that detail that much. So I, I had you know, core strength to improve power, um, you know, better posture so they can get in a better, more aerodynamic position, leg power. Well, so that, that's, that's, that, that's my three. Then you've got medical, you've got all the all the nutrition, you've got the biomechanics, the bikes, all these things. So that's that's the world I've lived in. So whether it's a footballer in the middle, I work with footballers mainly now, the same thing applies. Um, so this idea of searching for marginal gains is something that you sit down, discuss, plan, and, and get after and try and do your bit. Because then when, when the athlete wins, gets better, PBs, you sort of you're all proud, but there's that many people now in these teams that you know can you know have a smile on the face when when people win and they do PB because there is a lot of people going in a lot of a lot of time and effort going into that that one performance. So yeah, that's the world that's the world I live in, and there's a lot of a lot of teams now, whether it's football teams, rugby teams, they've all got the athletes, players in the middle, and obviously sit down, discuss how to make them better. So just a quick story. This is, this is one that I'm quite proud of. So 2008, these guys won the Team Pursuit gold medal. So team, team Pursuit is this. You try and do four kilometers on a track, in, in, on a velodrome, as fast as you can. I want to tell you the time, you, you, you'll, be, you'll be amazed how fast they can go. So Paul Manning, Ed Clancy, Geraint Thomas, and Bradley Wiggins. So I first met them when I was it's about 2005 and we sat around the table and everyone said right the problem the physio said the problem trying to get in this position all the time keep getting sore backs a lot of a lot of cyclists especially if you're trying to get so tucked in they keep getting a sore back 
but we need to produce the power through the body. At the end of the day, when they're pressing on the pedals, there's a lot of power goes through the body. So what can we do to stop them getting sore back? So it was like, look, at, look over at me, right? Core strength, core stability, brilliant, okay? So I basically set up a 16 week core program that we do when they were back in Manchester. They're, they're away a lot. Obviously they, 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 they train at altitude, they went to Italy a lot. So what I did for, for basically three years, 16 weeks per year, had them in my gym three times a week doing, doing core work, um, just to try and stop them getting sore backs and hopefully that power can be applied better. So in 2008 when they did 357.9, which is a world record, I was one of them multiple people with a big smile on my face, which was pretty cool. <laughs> And, and so think about it, four kilometers in 357, I mean, 60 kilometers an hour on a bike is unbelievable if you just put it into perspective. So yeah, pretty special. Right, sorry, there is a reason to tell you all this. <laughs> okay, right, this is the big bit now. This is the main bit for me. Hopefully you understand the idea of marginal gains. We're gonna come back to that right at the end. This is massive, know your audience. <coughs> please, 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 right. Number of professional athletes in the UK, around about 16 and, 16 and a half thousand. Majority of them in football, but you've got rugby, you've got all the Olympic sports, there's a lot of people lottery funded, they class as, as professional athletes. Yeah? What do we think, 16 and a half thousand? Would you have thought that was a lot, or not that many, is it, right? Amateur and semi-pro footballers, one and a half million. Golfers, 1.1. Tennis, 641. Rugby, 483, that was Rugby League and Rugby Union. Okay, so, the difference here to here, okay, I'm gonna do one thing. Kate, stand up for me. Okay, Kate's a professional athlete in, in our room, okay? Kate, sit down. Everyone else, stand up for me. Good for you anyway, we don't want to sit down too long. <laughs> this is nothing against you lot, you are not professional athletes, okay, but if I'm trying to sell Zinzino, who am I better going for, Kate or you lot? <laughs> okay, sit down, right, so please remember that, please remember that, that's number one, because it's a numbers game, we don't need to worry about these lot. I really don't, don't worry about these. Look, these are brilliant for, say, in Man Manchester City, take it. If, you, if you're speaking to a football, a group of footballers, if you go to rugby, tell them about St. Helens. Okay, we, and we'll look, there's, there's more and more ambassadors if you look, if you look on, uh, on, um, on the website. But I would say, please, sort of like, I, I get a lot of people when I come to these conferences, worried and, and struggle about trying to speak to professional athletes. And I really, really think you're sort of like, you can put a lot of time and effort into worrying, preparing, trying to get into this market, when if people who are in it, let them sort of get involved. And if you've got a really good link, don't, don't be wrong. All I'm thinking is for you guys, time, energy, volume, these are the people that you need to get after because these are the people that need the marginal gains, just like these guys. If you understand what Cole says, because he, he's giving you all the marginal gains you need to know, health, recovery, which we'll talk about in a minute, they're the marginal gains. You just need to speak to these guys. All these guys want to get better. They all want a PB. They want to play better football. They want to go up the, up the tennis rankings in the club. So they, they, need, they need marginal gains. Zinzino is a marginal gain, for sure. It's not a 25, 30%er. It's a, maybe a little bit smaller, but it's still a marginal gain. It can be a 25%er if someone keeps getting ill. Yeah, it can be huge. If someone doesn't get, can't play every week, and they wanna play every week, or they can't go from multiple runs because they get injured all the time. So it can be a big one, but these are the guys for you to, to focus on. So the, the main, main point of my talk today, guys, is, is changing the focus between Kate in the room and all of you lot in the room. Okay, so, oh, netballs were in there as well, sorry. Can't forget the netballs. <laughs> okay, good. 
right, we've done the maths, we've done the maths, please do the maths. Go for the bigger percentage, it's a volume game, go after the, the weekend warriors, go after the people who aren't pros. Good, and this is just a little reminder, Cole's best, miles better at talking about this than me. Yeah, I'm not, I've got nowhere near the nutrition acumen of Cole, but we know that it improves endurance, it helps build muscle, can help burn fat, recover faster, improve reaction time, perform better. So these are, there's, there's your marginal gains. So just, you, if you've got these in your head and then apply them to the <laughs> recreational athletes that you know, that is the way forward. That is the way forward for me in sports. When you think sport, think recreational athletes. Don't think pros, because I think it's, it's, it's very, very hard, okay? Ask the right questions. Yeah, I love this. Ask, ask good questions, yeah? Rather than telling people things sometimes, just ask. So, our language. Would you like to run more frequently? Because it's gonna help you recover better. Great question. If someone loves running, but they can't run that often because they don't recover very well, then this is, this is a great question. You can help them with that. The balance hall can help them with that. Would you like to run faster? Yeah, but I struggle with my joints. We can help you with that. Yeah. Would you like to run more because you don't miss as many days being ill? We can help with that. So asking good questions to, to, to recreational athletes is a way of starting to like, Dave, Dave's question about just health. I love that as well. That's like, everyone's gonna answer that and no one's gonna answer it poorly. But I think if, you, if you're speaking to people who, who do sports, these are all, you can apply these to different to the different sports, you know, to footballers, rugby players. <coughs> Your gym goers, <coughs> do you want to build muscle more efficiently? We know it can help with that, the anabolic state that it, it you know, it, it, it helps with. Would you like to get stronger? 